This is the DeWalt 20 volt sliding miter saw with model DCS361 and the Ryobi 18 volt sliding miter saw with model PBT01B. So just to be clear, as of the time of making this video, neither of these miter saws are currently available in the Philippines. I got the DeWalt from eBay and shipped it in via shipping cart and this Ryobi was borrowed from Casey of Kulai Blind on Instagram. Shout out to Casey for lending me his miter saw for this review. Let's start with the price. I got mine for around $270 after US taxes and the Ryobi would have cost around $250 after US taxes. Because they're both about the same size, the cost to ship either one would have been about the same. So all we're really talking about here is a negligible difference of just $20. Other similarities would be the size of the blade. Both of these saws use a 7 and 1 4 inch blade. A lot of people won't like that because people like machines with larger capacities and if it wasn't for my fear of big blades, I would tend to agree. Having said this, 7 and 1 4 inches is already plenty of cut capacity for me especially if you consider that these are sliding miter saws. So that slide function already provides a sufficient amount of cutting depth. Both of these miter saws only bevel one way so if you need something that bevels both ways you might want to look elsewhere as well. Both the DeWalt and Ryobi also have onboard adjustment tool storage with the Ryobi having a standard Allen wrench with a Phillips head and the DeWalt having a Torx or star tip on one end and an allen head on the other. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the differences between these miter saws. Maybe the most glaring difference for me is that DeWalt does not have a depth stop. Now, I actually did not realize this until I got it and started tinkering with it. I found that a bit strange. This is actually the first time I have seen a miter saw that didn't have a depth stop. Having said this, if I'm being honest, I don't ever remember using the feature. But still, it would have been nice to still have it. The Ryobi, on the other hand, has a standard depth stop that allows you to slide a plate under an adjustment bolt to activate it then you just slip it out of the way when you want to deactivate the depth stop the other thing i wanted to talk about was out of the box accuracy so not surprisingly the dewalt miter saw blade was square to the work surface and square to the fence the miter stops were also all perfect the ryobi's blade however was about half a degree shy of being square to the work surface and it was totally out of square with the fence so much so that i had to adjust both the fence and the miter stop just to get it right. Now, this isn't that big a deal if you know how to calibrate it and a simple Google search solves that problem if you don't. Having said this, it still kind of sucks that it was so far off out of the box. Anyway, after making the necessary adjustments, the unit was dead squared to both the fence and the work surface. Speaking of the miter stops, the DeWalt has its indents on top while the Ryobi has them at the bottom. Incidentally, while both saws have miter stops, neither has bevel stops. As far as locking your miter angles down outside of the set, stops, the Ryobi uses a trigger and twist system while the DeWalt uses separate push levers. Personally, I feel like the DeWalt system is more intuitive but both are pretty simple and should be easy to adjust to either one. As for the clamps that come with these units, I found the one on the DeWalt to feel like a little bit of an afterthought. I'm still sort of on the fence on whether I like it or not. On one hand, I like it because it's multi-purpose in the sense that I can just use it as a regular clamp or even a track saw clamp. On the other hand, it feels a bit loose and flimsy when it isn't engaged. To be fair, once clamped down, it's pretty solid. The clamp found on the Ryobi is more of your standard miter saw clamp that you would expect. It's nice and beefy and pretty solid. Maybe the coolest feature of the Ryobi miter saw is the blade change process. Check this out. When you lift the blade guard past a certain point, it stays up. That is really cool. Once it's up, you have access to the bolt holding the blade and can change your blades. This is in contrast to the DeWalt where it uses the more typical system where you have to unscrew a bolt, then lift the guard to expose the blade bolt then change blades. Come on DeWalt, no shame in taking points from other brands here. Let's adopt this cool lift and stay blade guard system of the Ryobi. Finally, let's look at these carrying handles. DeWalt has the standard carry handles on the sides and the top carry handle. The side handles are made of metal while the top carry handle is made of plastic. In contrast, the Ryobi side handles are made of plastic which I assume helps make it lighter but it doesn't have a top carry handle at all. Now, I wasn't sure why they did this and in the beginning, I thought it wasn't that big a deal but I will say that I caught myself more than a few times reaching for the top of the Ryobi to move it expecting a carry handle to be there. Personally I would have preferred a carry handle up top. Final thoughts if I had to choose between these two saws and was already invested in both battery systems which one would I get? Honestly I would still probably go with the DeWalt. I like the out of the box accuracy and the all metal build. The fact that it's a smaller blade and overall smaller machine compared to other sliding miter saws already makes it fairly light so 
so the added weight from the metal parts don't bother me at all. I just wish it had that cool blade guard stays up feature. But this is the one I'd go with. 